WIFO-FM in Jessa, Big Dog Country, 105.5 on your FM dial. It is 8 o'clock. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by O'Quinn & Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, and First Southern Bank. Most people understand the need for life insurance, but not many want to talk about why it's essential to your financial plan. It may seem intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. Don't get overwhelmed. Get started with Country Financial. Call me, Sean O'Quinn, today at 588-1051 and let me work with you to find life insurance that gives you the protection you need at a price you can afford. Life insurance policies issued by Country Life Insurance Company and Country Investors Life Assurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings Restaurant in Jessup is now open for business, practicing social distancing, but still serving that great food that Damon's is famous for. Come inside or come through the drive-thru, but Damon's is open inside and welcomes back its customers. The menu's the same, the service is fast, and the food is fantastic, and the sauces remain the same, mild, wild, insane, or inferno. The number is the same, 588-WING, 588-9464. Damon's Restaurant on West Cherry Street in Jessup, dining room now open for business. Come on in and enjoy a great meal today. Hi, I'm Raymond Brown. And I'm Mandy Yeomans. At First Southern Bank, our customers are like family. As a locally owned community bank, we're dedicated to helping our clients succeed. We have loans for every need, whether it's personal or business. We have lines of credit, auto loans, equipment loans, and of course, we offer mortgages. Stop by our bank or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob Show, right here on WIFO, 105.5 FM in Jessup, Big Dog Country. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. World Series begins tonight. Yep, exciting. Go Braves. Exciting. Yep. Braves are back in the series. Yep. It's good to see you. Sighting stuff right there, let me tell you. Hopefully they can win it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one gave much of a chance against the Dodgers. and uh, they, they did them four to two. So uh, Again, in the studio with us is a candidate for mayor, Tyrone Johnson. Did get the totals from yesterday, one from the city of Scriven, 61 from Jessup. So the grand total of early votes is 714 votes early. So, again, early voting ends this week, all this week, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and taking place at the Cracker Williams uh, Annex building. So hopefully it'll pick up this week and also Tuesday, Election Day. Again, Tuesday's Election Day, November 1st. But Tyrone, appreciate you coming in. Uh, again, uh, uh, first of all, we'll just ask you how the campaign's going. So far, so good, gentlemen. So far, so good. I'm going to ask you, yeah, a lot of people, I said I don't have Facebook, but there's a lot of confusion about this event you're having called the soul to the polls where people are getting paid ten dollars to participate are they getting paid to vote or are they getting paid to i mean that's that's the confusion so what's what's happening so explain explain uh, souls absolute, to the polls absolutely not souls to the polls is uh, an event which um originated in the african-american community um which is um I think several years ago, uh, it became an opportunity for people to vote on Sundays. Um, and so a lot of churches in the African-American community would work toward getting um, members of their congregation to go to make sure they vote and they, they partic- that they participate in the electoral process. Um, you said something about $10 or something? Yeah, that's the thing I got on Facebook. It says they're getting $10 to take people to the polls or people are confused they're getting $10 to pay the vote for Tyrone John. Where's the ten dollars come in? Who's no. getting the ten dollars? No, the, the, no. Uh, th- those were paid staff members, paid staff members of mine that were actually out working and canvassing. It had nothing to do with uh, uh, anybody who was actually 
uh, voting. You had to do with the people on my team that were being compensated for their services and their time. And what are they doing? Oh, they, they were, uh, we're going out and uh, putting um, door knockers on doors, going out and doing whatever it is that the uh, campaign team needed them to do in regard to uh, elevating the awareness about voting. Sure it's basically a paid political <laughs> staff, right? Yes. You see that on the state level, national level. Yes. So they're not taking yeah. people to the polls? No. No. There's, uh, no. Uh, they're, they're not. No. Uh, <laughs> People can be paid to take people to the polls if, they, if that's their staff position and that's, and that's what they do. Uh, the Souls to the Polls event, uh, that <coughs> event is usually a, an event where people call in and say they need a ride to the polls, but there's no compensation involved in that process. Again, for people who don't know who Tyrone Johnson is, tell us, explain, you know, you came home recently to take care of someone ill in your sure. family but what, what do you uh, okay. what do you do what have you done since you left college that's okay. what people are asking before 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 we go that far i, I wanted to uh, actually wanted to begin the show with clarifying some things and speaking directly to some things and i'm coming right back to your question okay. okay um first of all let me say good morning everybody in jessup and wayne county um i want to speak uh, before bob continues on the show with his questions i wanted to directly take this moment <clears throat> to say that any and all allegations and or reported claims of criminality of any sort, along with my not owning any real estate in Jessup or Wayne County, and that I couldn't have possibly earned the degrees which were conferred upon me, are utterly false. So I want to get that out first and foremost. And I want to also say that <clears throat> When you go through life believing that if you play by the rules, that opportunities will emerge and that good things will be added, and of course education should yield better life results, obviously in, in, in this process of this election, there are those who have desired to paint a different picture of me and have desired to do that for all of a sudden. Well, I want to suggest to those individuals that they should relinquish their research task to someone else for they have failed miserably in terms of researching me. Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays, the former president of Morehouse College, once stated that the failure in life does not come from not reaching your goal. The failure comes for having no goal for which to reach. It isn't a calamity to die with dreams unfulfilled. But it is a calamity not to dream, not failure. It is low aim that is the sin. And so there are those who have been aiming low throughout this entire political process. They've aimed low, and, and when you aim low, there's no way you can hit me because this campaign is all about moving on up, and it's all about operating on higher ground. And that's what we've done throughout the entire process. At no point have I spent one moment of my time focused on my opponent. In fact, you, you won't even hear, hear me say his name. Because in reality, it's all about the people of Jessup. It's all about making Jessup a better place. And it's all about helping Jessup to shine and to grow. So for those who have anything that you have on me, I want you to hit me with your best shot. I want to make it incandescently clear for those who slander or demean or defame my good name or my family's name I want to caution you that my legal team is ready and I'm ready to sue the pants off of anybody who would slander my good name or that of my family so I want to first put that out there before we discuss anything else because I think it's important that I have that opportunity to do that I and I also want oh, before you go on Bob hold on before you go on I also want to share something because I want you to confirm for the listeners today this which I'm going to show to you just tell me exactly wh who whom was this issued by and whose name is on there. Uh, it's issued by Morehouse College. It's issued by Morehouse College. Whose name is on there? Now, what he is showing, he's showing a plaque of his one of his diplomas. Yes. Okay. No, no. Just say whose name is on there. Adair Tyrone Johnson. My name is on there. That's from Morehouse College, right? Okay. So tell me, what is this? That's by whom is it issued? Name of the college at Simmons, top. Simmons College. Simmons College in Boston, Massachusetts. Whose name is on that degree? Adair Tyrone Johnson. All right, hold on one second. <laughs> All right, so tell me whose name is on this one, Bob. Who is this by? Uh, Columbia University. Columbia University in New York. Yeah. Whose name is on this degree? Tyrone Johnson. Okay, and, and, and let me give you one more. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to give you a few of them, okay? Whose name is on this degree? Harvard. Harvard University. Whose name is on there? Uh, 
they were tired. Exactly, long exactly. Long Tyrone, how long did you right. spend in college? I spent I spent as much time as I desired to spend in college. <laughs> but what I wanted to make it clear is that Chicken. I'm the last person you want to play with. Okay, my dad left my dad left this life about 13 years ago. All right, and he lived a life of honor and respect. You can best believe that I live a life of honor and respect. Anybody who knows me, classmates, community members, you and everyone else know that my name is a good name. And I'm not going to allow my opponent, any of his cronies, any of these people on uh, the Wayne County, whatever page they hang out on, because some folks obviously live in that space. I want them to know and understand that the candidate who's running for office, who is the best prepared, the best educated, the best informed, is the one that you're speaking to on today. So I want to get that out there. So with that said, good morning, everybody, again, Wayne County. And I now will allow Bob to continue the show. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because somebody dropped this uh, envelope at my doorstep. I have no idea what it is, but, you know, they're basically trying yep. to insinuate that you've been uh, – yeah, they tried to insinuate that I that have some criminality. Right. I saw the same report. Right. Actually, this was brought to my attention. Uh, you, have to, idea uh, you have any idea who's circulating? No, you know, no, I have no idea who's circulating. Well, I do have some idea who's circulating it. Um, I do have some idea who's circulating it, and that person is connected to one of the former employees of our city who recently left our city, um, his daughter. Um, so I'm aware of certain individuals who have passed this out. But but. Obviously, these people are clowns. I mean, I mean, even a person with the lowest of executive functioning could do a better job of going and researching me. Right. My path, in fact, interesting that you point that out. Let me point one thing out to you in this report. Uh, and what I'm going through, folks, is a bogus report that was created with multiple names in it that is supposed to be me, something that, that was fabricated. But this indicates... That in the, in, in the year 2000, uh, in the year 2000, that there was a crime committed in a city that I did not even live in at the, live in at the time. This um, fabricated document starts off with researching Adair Johnson, but then it transitions. It's no longer researching Adair Johnson. It's researching A. Johnson. Then it's researching a Tyrone Johnson. And there are millions of Tyrone Johnsons in, in, on the face of the earth. The fact of the matter is this is not me, not me at all. And it's just a fabric, it's just fabricated garbage. But at the end of the day, as I say, hit me with your best shot. There's nothing for me to defend. I, I just want people just to understand that, that this is what this um, election has resorted to at this point. Let's get back to the election. Though. Like I said, people still ask about Tyrant. You know, like I said, you went to your, um, all the colleges you went to. But since you got out of college, people are just asking, what, what do you do? Because like I said, your opponent, Ralph Hickox, has businesses in Wayne in City of Jessup, invested in City of Jessup. Yeah. So people are asking, what, what's Tyrell and Johnson done mm. yeah, okay. since he left college? What sure. kind of jobs did he have? Sure. What, what does he do now? Sure. I'm just oh, curious sure, what sure. you're doing. Well, in terms of my pathway, I have served for 25 years as an educational leader. I have uh, served as a clinician. By, by training, I was a speech and language pathologist. I was a reading specialist. This is e easily traceable. I've worked for the best schools districts in the country. I've worked for Gwinnett Public Schools um, north of Atlanta. I've worked for Boston Public Schools. I've worked for New York Public Schools. I've been the president and CEO of a nonprofit organization, the Maroon and White Fund. Um, which is, in terms of economic development, a lot of my experience of working uh, with board of trustees and, and working on capital campaigns and things of that nature were on the higher education level. Well, my doctoral work was in higher, was in higher education. Um, so I've worked at many institutions. The institutions that I have degrees from are institutions that I've also worked for. So my track record is clear. Every year of my life is well documented. Um, so it becomes frustrating. People want to see you sweat. You're not going to see me sweat, okay? You're not going to see me sweat. You know, so I laugh at this stuff, and it took a long time for me to even respond to it because I was basically spending the entire time laughing about it, you know, until people said, no, I think you need to just say something about it. And I said, okay, well, maybe I do. So I have now done that. Um, but I also want to talk about, if I might, the difference in my leadership style and my opponent's leadership style. Um, I want to bring to, the, to everyone's attention and I want to share this. Now, interestingly enough, my, my opponent indicated on his platform that he served on the Heart of Georgia Regional Commission, that he served on this commission um, in 2016, 2017, 2018. 
Well, I am on the Heart of Georgia Regional Commission, currently representing Wayne County on the Heart of Georgia Regional Commission. This commission meets every month. The third, I'm sorry, the, the last Thursday of the month, I drive, or sometimes I ride with Commissioner Boot Thomas to Mount Vernon, Georgia, for the Heart of Georgia Regional Commission meetings. So my opponent indicated that he served on that commission. So what I requested from the executive director was to tell us exactly what my opponent did on that commission. So let me read for you one brief mo uh, uh, snippet that what, of what he said. So this is from Brett Manning, the executive director of the Heart of Georgia Regional Commission. And he states, our records indicate that Ralph Hickok served on the regional council from January 2016 to December 2018. He attended two meetings, which were the 2016 meeting of March 2016 and October 2017 meeting. So here you have a situation where someone is appointed to a regional commission, was there for three years, only went to two meetings, 2016, 2017, and didn't go at all in 2018. What exactly did he bring home to Wayne County? Absolutely nothing, because you have persona non grata. Now let me tell you what I did since I've been on that commission. I've been on that commission for one year, one year, but I brought home COVID, additional COVID relief dollars so that there was rental assistance for people in Wayne County that needed it. That helped, who did that help? That helped the property owner and it helped the renter. I also brought home additional funds for utility assistance. I'm not talking about what Action Pack provides for our local citizens, but additional funds. I reported this to the County Commission as to what was happening and to what, how the monies were being brought home for our people. In addition to that, for people who needed a arm rail, I mean a, um, a guard rail, or something to help them in and out of the tub, and in one instance, a family that needed a new um, handicap rail coming from their home, that was built at the cost of over $10,000 for that resident. The resident didn't spend not one penny. I came home, helped to facilitate that assistance for people because I'm a people person and I want to make sure that Wayne County gets its fair share of what we should be getting from the Heart of Georgia Regional Commission. There are 17 counties involved in that. So what I want the people to know is that how in the world could we elect someone, the other person in the race, to the role of mayor and what exactly would he do in that role other than something to try to benefit himself. That's what I want to know. Because when it comes down to what we need in Wayne County, I can best tell you in the words of Governor George Busby, who once served our state. Governor Busby said it is imperative that all governments develop a closer working relationship. Although there are separate and distinct roles which must be recognized, this does not mean that gov government cannot help each other. So, Mr. Hickok served on the county commission, as we all know, and we know about the divisive time, the three, two votes over and over and over again. How, I want to hear him answer this on Thursday, how is he going to serve, or how would he serve as mayor and develop a cooperative relationship with the county and the board on which he served and on which he repeatedly told lies about Ed Jeffords and about the notion that something was untoward in our county office and how monies were being managed. It took multiple investigations by the ACCG team, by the GBI, by the sheriff's office, and an audit which prove no supporting evidence whatsoever confirming any of the allegations that he made. Yet, we in Wayne County have not heard him, not at all have we heard a word of apology to the commissioners, 
to the people of Wayne County, to Mr. Ed Jeffords for having made such false allegations. That is exactly what's going on in this campaign. More false allegations. We need to unify Wayne County in order for Wayne County to be productive. We need to come together, city and county, working together to make Wayne County a better place. I am a unifier. That's all I know. I am a unifier. That doesn't mean I'm not, mean I'm not a decision maker. Oh, by no means will I just sit down and allow anybody to dictate something. I am the person who's always going to sit down to try to get to the best possible decisions for the people of Wayne County. You're not going to get that in my opponent. I'll let you take the question from there. Well, I'm glad you got the decision because the decisions has to be made on the full-time city manager. And yes. they've done a 180 uh, this they past did week. They They said from day one they were going to make a decision before the election. But now this past Friday they said they're going to wait till after the election because they apparently need uh, – decisive vote. So. No, Bob, they just simply followed my leadership. I told you all very uh, at the very beginning that this needed to wait to after the election. I was the very first person to say that. So, so it seems as though they've come around to where I was all along, that this didn't even need to be touched until a new council's in place. Because what sense does it make for one council to make a decision, render a decision that the next council is going to have to deal with? We're too close to Nick Harris um, exiting um, Mayor Keith is already gone. The council is grappling right now because it can't get to a vote of four. It can't get to a vote of four, particularly with Ray House being out ill. Right. It can't get to that point. Well, that's the, that's the issue out here. They don't have a consensus vote. But if you get on there, the, like I said, the mayor doesn't have a vote, but is the mayor looking for the no, best? No, Bob. <clears throat> no, Bob. You love to say that the mayor does not have a vote. The Only mayor has a, a vote. He does, but that's important. Only in a tie. Yeah, but it's important. Well, and in saying. this case, it's going to be very important. Yeah. yeah, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. I've been doing this 38 years. I've seen the mayor vote zero times. So right, I'm, okay, just saying, right. I'm just saying. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but I'm just saying. Uh, if, the, if, qu if, the question I want to get to, though, is with the full-time city manager, the question is, do we want the best qualified candidate? Is that what we're looking for? We say that we're looking for the best qualified candidate. Um, I argue that the best qualified candidate was already there. We didn't have to go do a search. That's, that's the way I see it. The best qualified candidate was already there. Um, and, and in my viewpoint, uh, I, I don't understand what the search is all about. For example, um, Mike Deal has been off the scene how long now? Several months. Several months. Uh, I don't think anybody would report that the trash wasn't picking up on, hasn't been picked up on time, that the city's not functioning the way that it should be functioning. And the reason it's functioning the way that it is because we have an interim city manager who's obviously doing the job. Uh, so my thing is we, we always say we want to promote from within. We want to, we want to promote local. Well, we have an opportunity to promote local. More importantly, as I underscored for the council two months ago, we're in a situation in Jessup where we have 78 men on our workforce and only 12 women. We, women represent 56% of the city of Jessup, but they only occupy 12 out of 90 positions in our workforce. We need to find a way to promote women leadership and to promote women in all aspects of our local government. There's no reason why a woman cannot work on the trash department or on the on the street department. Then there's a reason why a man cannot work in the in the water department or work in the main office of City Hall. We need to understand that we want our city to be inclusive of everybody, particularly around the around the um, the notion of gender. And so I hope that whomever the finalists are, just personally speaking, as an advocate for women, that, if, that I'm hoping that those finalists, once they are revealed, that they are women. I would like to know that they're women. Um, they say she's a finalist, but they haven't she, said She's one of them, they, but they, say, they, 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 they won't say about the other. We don't know anything about the others, whether but, they're women or not. Well, now they're saying that all four are still of us. I don't so yeah, it's, it's been kind of confusing to me. It's been very confusing, and and the, and the mayor pro tem hasn't given us any clarity. I yeah. mean, he, you know, every time he comes forward, it's a different song. So my thing is, you know, what what is the deal? Right. You know, by law, we know by law, once you get down to three, it is supposed to be revealed. Supposedly they're down to three. So is it three finalists? Is it four? You know, um, if all of this had waited, as I had indicated, if all of this is waited, I don't think we would be where we are right now. Um, 
You know, yeah, this whole thing, I, I just, it's just very frustrating. It's frustrating for the citizens. It's frustrating for all of us who sit there and watch it. And if we had at least some accountability around being truthful and being forthright and being clear, then people would at least walk away from the situation knowing at least this is a situation. Because you reported out one thing last week only to have to say that another, that, that a commissioner um, um, uh, misspoke. misspoke. That's, yeah. what, that's what they yeah. told me. Yeah, I that's said, what they told me. They told right. me one thing and then right. I said they got it wrong. Yeah, we're right. getting to the end of, the, I appreciate you coming in, but again, people are headed to the poll, so when they go to the voting booth in the city of Jessup and they see the two names, Tyrone Johnson or Ralph Hickox, why should they vote for Tyrone Johnson? The citizens should vote for Tyrone Johnson just as I've stated from the onset. And that is, I am all about greater possibilities, new opportunities, healthier communities, and better living. We have situations that need to be resolved. The swimming pool issue needs to be resolved. I'd like to see the swimming pool actually named after David Larson. Um, I think we need to build a swimming pool, and I think we need to give honor to a man of our community who served well and who got that Olympic medal back in 1984, I believe it was. Um, I'd love to see David Larson, uh, Larson honored in that process. Um, that may or may not be the case. I'm a firm believer that we can build a pool cheaper than what is being proposed. It doesn't take $1.3 million to do this project. I, there's no way you, you can convince me of that. And I would do everything in my power to make sure that we work and that we get enough um, bids uh, um, on, on the project that will allow us to do this at a lower cost. Um, I'm also a firm believer that we need um, to have community parks that are vibrant, just like we've done with, with the Cracker Williams Park which is beautiful and enjoyed by many, we can place those kinds of parks in other places of the city. What about a skating park? I mean, there are guys who go on skateboards all the time and they're in your parking lot and all over the place, but they need a, uh, they need a viable place and a viable space in order for that kind of thing to be done. Um, there are lots of things that we need to work on. I'm a firm believer that if it isn't broken, we don't need to fix it. Let me say that first. If it isn't broken, then we need to leave it alone. And a lot of great things about our city that we need to leave alone. But there are small, there are other things that we do need to work on. Homelessness, for example. We have people, we have homeless all throughout our city. I'm seeing it more and more that are you know, sleeping behind, you know, uh, grocery stores and things of that nature. Why are we not talking about that? What does that say about us? We have to be concerned about our common, about the common man. And we should look for solutions where solutions are needed for problems that exist. So that's the kind of leadership you'll get from me is a I'm the person who's not going to try. I'm going to listen to everybody, first of all, to make sure they're heard. But I'm also a person who is going to help use that position of mayor to empower the council members to do the right thing. When council members are not doing the right thing, you need to know that. When their things are going on, such as the situation we had with the police department, there should have been a pub there should have been instances where you got monthly public updates and statements from the mayor about what was going on. David Earl did a fine job, don't get me wrong, because he was a great mayor. But I tell people, you know, people think there's some kind of prerequisite for running for mayor. There's no prerequisite for running for mayor other than you be a US citizen and you live in the place that you're running. I mean, it's not like you have to have a college degree to run for mayor. I mean, we've had we've had a mailman, Herb Shaw, sir, for what eighteen years. He was a former mail mailman. So we, you know, all this stuff about you got to be this in economic development. You got don't come with all these new requirements because I'm running, because I'll meet the requirements and, and exceed them. But let's be honest, nobody loves Jessup, Georgia more than I do. I double dog dare since we're on Big Dog Radio and I'm a UGA alum. I'm a double dog dare somebody to say that they love Jessup, Georgia, and would do more for Jessup, Georgia than I would. My heart and soul is in this, and I am committed that we're going to win this because everybody is involved with my campaign. Republicans are on my team. Democrats are on my team. Independents are on my team. And I'll go a step further. Even my opponent may end up voting for me. Now, why do I say that? That sounds crazy, doesn't it? The reason I say that is because Ralph Hickok voted for me to be appointed to the Heart of Georgia Regional Commission. Four Republicans and a Democrat voted for me to be appointed. The requirement is that you own a business. The requirement is that you be in Wayne County. He voted for me then, and I believe he's going to vote for me again. Well, we'll ask him that Thursday when he comes in. We do appreciate you coming in. Again, appreciate you coming in. Thank you, guys. I greatly appreciate, appreciate you. Thank you. All right. have, have a good day. Everybody get out and vote.
It is 8.30. World Famous Butch and Bob Show has been brought to you by O'Quinn Associates, Country Financial, by Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, also brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply and First Southern Bank.